So good morning, good morning everyone. Good morning everyone. My name is Brandon. So today I'm gonna show you how you can actually analyze your own differential gene expression patterns in RNA six sample without using a command line. So specifically, I'm actually doing the whole thing inside the Galaxy server, so you don't even have to calculate everything in your own computer. However, this is only for um, organism with a very very well established genome. So you have a novel transcriptome that you actually want to do Trinity assembly. I'll do it in a separate tutorial. But first thing we have, we will just open the. The Galaxy surface, the Galaxy platform is just the use Galaxy website here. So you show you how there's a tool menu, there's a history menu, and there's analysis menu in the middle. So the first thing I have to do is that you have to upload your own data into the Galaxy server. So the first thing you do is to upload, click this button over here for the uploading. So you will see something like this, which you can easily drop your file here. But if you do not have a very fast internet server and your data is already on an FTP website, you can just, just choose the FTP website you upload to RRG, but this is a little bit complicated. So the easiest way is to just paste the FRT address, something like this here, and it will upload the whole thing into your history very easily. So I'm not doing, since I'm not using my own data as an example, I'm using uh, SRA data. Uh, just the uh, online database that is from a previous experiment so I'm gonna do this so this will extract the reads no not this one so this will extract the reads in a fast queue format and you automatically save the history into my 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 galaxy server so nope so the history is here so I have six different samples so to, so I need to upload all six of them into my Galaxy server. Which is, I'll just type in the ERS, the ER session. So it means that this is specific towards one experiment and specific towards one sample. So you just have to do this six times for to upload all the sample into your into your history. So I'll just do this six times. If the editor actually get my notes uh, there will be some cat showing up beside the screen so you won't actually get bored from me uploading things six times so the three of them on top is from the control sample as you know you know having a lot of reads is useless it's actually better to have a less sequencing that but more biological sample that will actually increase the the significance of the DEG that you can have and it's actually saving a lot more money because when you have to sequence a big old library actually they're, they're significantly more expensive it's always cheaper to get a, a less shallow sequencing depth and more biological sample if you're you, you are dealing with well established data that you can already annotate but of course if you are use, doing a new Transcriptome, there's a very different story which I'm not talking about it here. So now I have done all six of them, you can actually see that six history. Of course, this is not the, this is not the first time that I do it, that's why it started with number eight. But if you are, if you it is the first time that you use Galaxy, so it would be one, two, three, four, five, six over here. So the uploading might take a while, and remember that you have to register a user before you can actually do the uploading because this will be larger than the 6 gigabyte that is allocated to a, a free user so i'm uploading i'm uploaded as my own account which is why i have about 250 gigabyte to work with uh, since this might actually take a while we'll come back when all the sequence has been uploaded Okay, now we have all the sequencing actually uploaded to your Galaxy uh, server. We can see here we have the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is a RISE Nippon Bari project. So I name it Nippon Control. One hour, one. So this control sort, control sort, control sort. I'm not sure why it's not uploaded in order. But when you do it, it should be in the order that you upload it in. So of course, you when you actually upload it, you call it extract read, and you can just easily change it here the name to, to type it whatever that you want. So to be really easy, I'm just just name it the way that it is originally named in the database. 
which is the Nippon sort, but you can name it whatever that you want depending on your data. So after you have all of the raw data uploaded, actually one of them is 4 gigabyte in size. So they are, they are very very huge if you are doing the calculation on your own computer. So once you have uploaded all of them, the top the 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 protocol that I use will actually need a GFF3, which is kind of genome function format data, which is actually contained of the, the 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 what is that called? The name of each locus. The name of each gene on the gene locus, you can say, you can say it like that. So it will actually point each of the transcript to one of these uh, genomic locus if done properly and it would actually tell you the ID of each transcript when you have the DEG list later down the, down the road. So after you have that, so how do I upload this is that you can just choose the uploading that you can just pay you can just do the page fetch data like I said just now and go to this website. So this is actually a plant genome sequencing project. So they have already compiled the, the GFF3 format for all of the chromosomes. So we just click here, copy link and press and put it in. So after you have done this, press start and you automatically upload this whole GFF3 into this file over here, which is the Dimpon GFF3. So uh, once have you have all seven of these data ready, just click uh, the share data here and choose workflow. Okay, so once you have the workflow open, you will show something like this. So this is a bunch of a bioinformatics pipeline that has been submitted by user around the world. So you can easily use it to calculate what you need. So there's a bunch of them you can do as array, you can do um, SMP calling on single ended data, you have NGS assignment, varying calling, and many many other things. So the, the thing the workflow that we're using here is called Tuxedo, and there will be three of them, depends on how many replicates you have. So if you have one replicate, use this, two use this. So we have three replicates in this condition. So I'm gonna import this into our into the whole server that we have. So it will take a while and what so you can see this is already input so we will just start using the workflow so you can see i have a bunch of workflow imported in my in my server but for you you should have just the one that you already imported so we'll go to edit just to get an idea of how the workflow actually works so you can know when you upload the data which column will actually represent which uh, what to say which column we input which file will be easier to understand for, for you obviously my internet is a bit slow it might or might not happen to you for this so for this you can just see here so this is the input data set which is the fast queue file needed so the input data set will actually go into a top hat so the top hat will accept an RNA seq fast queue file and output all this thing yep, do not move this so what we'll actually need is to accept the heat, the BAM file. So the BAM file will go to Kafling and the Kafling will actually calculate the 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 ISO form, the assemble ISO form. So this will happen for all of the sample fast queue that we actually ported in. So all six of them will actually do this the same thing. So after they have actually assembled all the ISO form, they have to go to Kaf merge, who will merge six different GTF into one and compare it to the reference annotation which we can see is here it's not a very nicely arranged so this is the reference GTF that we upload to the server just now so this will go into Kaf merge and Kaf compare so this will actually output uh, the final combined transcript GTF file into the final compare comparison Kaf program so before that we have to actually see there's another output over here from top hat which is the BAM will go into Kafling and another one will actually go directly here into the Kaf diff. So Kaf diff is the Kafling for differential expression calculation according to the name. So it will accept the transcript as a GTF file and it will accept all the BAM file from condition 1 or the replicates and condition 2 from all the, all the replicates. So after we have understand this, then you output the one with so the one with a star is output. So and the one without star will still be calculated, but it will not output. It will not it will not show up in your history after the final run. 
So here we will need the splicing differential, we will need the gene expression, and we will need the isoform. But of course, depend on what you are trying to do, you could just actually just get a gene and you'll be more than enough to, to explain your data. But it all depends on your data design, it could different from one experiment to another. So once we have finished this, we just click this one and we click run. So we do not want to save because obviously it's been using for quite a while. We don't want to change anything. So we'll press leave. So once you press the button, you go back to the analyze data platform. And again, my internet data is very slow. So it might take a while for me to work this. So we, do you want to save result as a huge history? Highly recommended because there is more than a hundred output and we will just do the history as this one. So I'll put a new here. So it's more clear to me. So condition one, two, three, this will be a condition one, which is what I want to put my control in. So we have to control one, two, three for all the control. And this is the reference GTF file, which is the, uh, it can actually accept GTF and GFF3. So it doesn't matter if you have GFF, but of course you'll be better if you use GTF because the calculation will be easier. But a GFF3 file will actually work on this pipeline. So on the condition two, we do the same thing. We just put the order sort into the, into the thing and it will show up as sort one, sort two, and sort three. The, since they will actually go or go into calf merge and actually they are just replicates of each other. The sequence does not matter unless you are a perfectionist then I it doesn't matter you can you can arrange them in the way you want but it will not affect the result. So since our sequence is based on rice you have to select your reference genome as rice and you have to do it for the all six of them. So once you finish everything, you have select all the genome to rise genome and you just put in the condition which is put as control and stress. Easier for everyone to study. And we will just use the default parameter. But of course, this is up to experimentation. I would recommend you when you're running this, run a few times and see what happens and see which of that actually give you best result. And try to understand each one of them, each of the 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 parameters that you're running and how it would affect your final result. So once you have done all this, just press run flow. And that's basically it actually. But the problem is that it would actually take quite a while to run. So um, we wait a while, maybe tomorrow we'll come back and we'll see what happens and how the results gonna look like. So after a while, we should maybe maybe it would take an overnight processing because there's quite a lot of data to be to be calculated you actually receive an email from galaxy and you actually see the three file that you have i have talked about it from the workflow just now so the three of them will be output into your history list over here so we have the transcript additional differential analysis we have the gene differential analysis and we have the splicing splicing differential analysis testing. So what I'll do is just click on this and have a look at your data. I have a preview of your data within Galaxy. So you can actually see this is the test ID, gene ID, the name of the gene, the locus, and the, the, two sam the condition of the two sample. And finally, we have the RP cam, the RP cam value here and the log to fold change between the two samples. So the best thing here is that we actually has a column called significance, which is to calculate whether the, the differential expression is actually significant to one another. So it's actually very difficult to see from here because we can see one significant, we can actually see another significant somewhere in the line. But it's really difficult to work with if you want to just want a list of the DEG that is significant. So what I'll do here, we will just download the, the, the text file which is around 3.1 megabyte, fairly small to, to work with, but I already downloaded it. So I'm just gonna open it on my desktop right now, which is somewhere here. Okay, it's gone. So, nope, this is the pasta.
Okay, it's gone. I'm gonna download again. So I should have it here. Yeah, I already have it here. So let's just open this. And in in Windows, you use it in a Notepad, and in the text in a Mac, you use it in text edit. Of course, this is not a very good method of dealing to with opening big big data like this. But this is very small data, and you are able to open in a text pad. Because for larger data, I believe that TextPad will not be able to open this. It will just hang like, immediately when you open it. So what I'll do is that I'll just copy everything from here. Just Control A or Command A on Mac. Copy everything and paste it in, a, in an Excel file. So in an Excel file, it's fairly easy. You just select everything and use a, a custom sort button here and just sort by two level. The first thing is to sort by the significance value. We want yes on top, but uh, not significant on the bottom. And then by the log to fold change, we should want the largest fold change to be on top and the smallest fold change to be on the bottom. So after the red OK, you automatically sort everything. So you can actually see uh, there's all significant over here. And from the log to fold change, you can see these two, one, and something else. So you can see there's some infinity over here, which the gene is not detected in the first sample. So usually this I will just ignore because you can't test something with if you do not detect a change. So it's a very interesting thing, but I will highly recommend that you do another PCR on this or qPCR to see what happened here. And you can actually see uh, the higher the RPCAM, of course, the more significant they are. And for value that a small RPCAM, the significance will automatically cut them out. So you don't really have to worry about how the calculation is done. You just have to look at the log to fold change over here, and you look at the gene ID, and you look at the locus. So the gene ID and the locus will actually map you to another database, which I'll discuss in the next video on how we actually retrieve the gene information to this and you actually map them back together. So for now, I will have, you have what I've shown in this video is that how can you without an internet, without a very fast internet connection, you can download the, the database from SRA server, you can import them to Galaxy and using one basic workflow, you can actually calculate the DEG between the two samples with three replicate each, even without very fast internet access or very fast computer. And you don't even have to deal with all the command line nonsense that I have to deal with last time. So once you have this list, uh, you can go to the next video about how you can map the gene ID and the locus ID into useful genotic symbol. For now, thank you for watching Breakfast for Living.